What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we saw the flash. We did. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the flash. Before we get into that, I suspected, Brian, all along that their praise for this film was over exaggerated <laughs> for the purpose of which didn't work getting people out to go see this film once the word of mouth uh came out in terms of what truly this was which was an okay film brian uh i was entertained but we'll get into it in a moment uh I need to hear your thoughts, Brian. Was it everything that you expected it to be? Do you fall in? Do you have similar sentiment to what I think of this film and what we thought of this film when it was going to come out? Well, I think we, we should circle back to this hype, the, the way the hype machine worked for this film, because I have suspicions about this now that we've seen the movie, because it was so specific and it was so consistent and as you say the reality is so far from what the hype was yeah. that it's too conspicuous to kind of leave it alone so let's come back to that generally speaking i agree with you i think this is at its center a pretty entertaining movie i think there's some thing there's some pieces of this that i will not mind rewatching when it comes out on an airplane or on tv i probably will actually see this movie again uh just to just to kind of see how it plays the second time the tagline for me in the end is the flash can't outrun the snyderverse and, and i mean that on a couple of levels it did its best but it just couldn't get away from a few things that i think were sort of preordained from when Zack snyder was sort of at the controls of the, of the dc eu some of the problems i've seen online people had with it i actually didn't even have as much to be quite honest we'll talk about visuals okay um, there are some there are some shoddy shots but like i don't know that it made or break broke the experience for me in my theater it was noticeable but it was noticeable you're right but i guess i guess what i'm saying is my overall experience at that by the time that stuff really rolled in and really kind of was that bad it was in parts of the movie where i kind of was like well this isn't really for anything other than fan service anyway so we'll mm -hmm. talk about that but i think there's three there's three main issues to me that before this movie went before the cameras ensured that it could not be what the hype promised that it was, which was quote, one of the greatest superhero movies ever made. There's three issues. So number one to me is I just think the multiverse thing is played at this point. It's just been, we've seen so many versions of this, some done well, some done poorly that the bar for, telling a multiversal story that is ultra compelling now is almost impossible and yeah. so once this story chose to be that from its very beginning with the loose loose inspiration of flashpoint that i think was sort of issue number one that this movie wasn't going to overcome mm. i think issue number two evan peters quicksilver got there first there's a couple of scenes in this movie that are meant to show you kind of the magic of being the Flash moving in the Speed Force. And I think Evan Peters as Quicksilver, especially in his debut scene, did it all better. So we'd already yeah. seen it. Yeah. That's number two. And number three, which is the one that really matters. And I am completely setting aside all of the legal issues. I fundamentally do not like Ezra Miller's take on Barry Allen, and I thought it was horrible in this film to the point where I had a tough time rooting for him, especially when yeah. he was surrounded by characters who I really did want to root for in Michael Keaton's Batman, Ben Affleck's Batman, Sasha Kaye's Supergirl, who we'll get to, who I thought was excellent. Ezra Miller's choices in portraying Barry Allen to me are just wrong. And that yeah. goes back to Zack <clears throat> Snyder cast him as the Flash. And as long as he was going to be the Flash for this movie and play it this way, 
there was no scenario in my mind where this could be a great movie. I think this movie actually got about as close to the ceiling as it could, given he was the lead. No. But he, to me, was the biggest limiting factor on why this movie, when I walked out of it, it's just, it's, it's going to go down as okay and entertaining, but not a classic. Yes, exactly, exactly. I was entertained. But in terms of all the talks of this being compared to those movies, like No Way Home, Back to the Future is downright disrespectful and dishonest. A hundred percent. So, I agree with you with regards to uh, Ezra Miller as a, as a choice for this uh, character. I, I think it was just all wrong. He did not remind me at all of The Flash or The Flash that I'm used to seeing. What did you think of uh, Michael Keaton? I liked it. I mean, I think Michael Keaton still has it. Yeah, I think certainly. He, he clearly enjoyed doing this. He seemed invested. I actually, I thought this movie did pretty right by Batman as a yes. character. I thought the bat, the, cause we right now with Robert Pattinson, we have a very interesting early days take on Batman. Yeah. This movie, I thought both with Affleck's set piece and with Keaton's action, did a very good job of showing you fully realized, tricked out gadget Batman being a step ahead, yeah. doing cool things, like figuring things out. I really enjoyed the Batman action. I, I actually, mm -hmm. those are the, if you ask me what are the scenes I will be excited to rewatch, it's Affleck chasing down the truck on the mm -hmm. highway. Yeah. And it's Keaton executing the prison break of Supergirl. To me, that yes. those are the best scenes in this movie from an action standpoint. And Michael Keaton as a character is still compelling. He still, he played it pretty well. Like, I was like, oh, I, I believe you have moved 30 years past the 1989 um, character that I saw. And you, you know, and, and I actually, if anything, I wanted more interaction between him and Barry. And mysteriously, he has, I don't believe he and Sasha Kaye exchange any lines to each other directly. And I was mystified by how Batman could have a crypt the last Kryptonian standing in front of him and not have questions and never have a conversation um, in yeah. this film. But I, I, I found myself wanting more Keaton dialogue. I found myself wanting more Affleck dialogue. I thought the one scene he plays with Bruce Wayne standing on the by, by his car, I thought it was excellent. I was like, where was that Bruce Wayne? Where was that Bruce Wayne the entire <laughs> he time? He said it. He said it. I finally figured it out. He did. I loved that. <laughs> thing. I was like, I wanted to see that Bruce Wayne, and even in BBS and even in Justice League, which I think would have been different stories. I I really liked the gravitas that he had in that scene. And I was like, yeah. we only get one of these? Like, I, I was yeah. sad, saddened by that. Yeah. This certainly for me, Brian, was a much lesser received adaptation of the Flashpoint storyline um, from the comics and the animation, because the animation still was number one for me. If you had, if I had to choose which one I wanted to watch, I would watch that one, the animation one. But this, this adaptation, it was missing those fundamental things that made that that storyline so great, Brian. Yeah. Um, I was there to see what was done. Yeah, I think I that's think I think it. that's right. I think that's right. Um, so you know, I just think if we start with Miller though, I, and you and I had had this discussion, each. The, the take on Barry that when he's not the Flash, he is still in sort of this like hyper kinetic mode all the time. Mm. It's a choice, but it just has never worked for me. It's not funny. Me neither. It feels very forced. He comes across. I thought the most poignant line in the film is actually when older Barry is talking to younger Barry, when younger Barry is cavorting around the back cave, and he's like, "Do you know how annoying you sound?" And he's like, "Oh, <laughs> now I know how people." And I'm like, "You got it, buddy, right yeah, there. Exactly. You summed it up very nicely. Beautifully written. <laughs> Beautifully written. Poor choice for a hero, but yes, exactly. You're 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 hitting on it. And I just, I couldn't get past it. I couldn't. I think this movie tried in a few moments to make him be more dramatic and slow things down. And again, as we saw in Zack Snyder's Justice League, he was at his best. I think when that happened, but I just couldn't. The, I found the portrayal annoying and grating to the point where, like I said, yes, we should all root for and sympathize with the idea of a boy wanting to reconnect with his lost parents. But I, 
like I said, young Barry to me actually was pretty good. <clears throat> Ian Lowe, who plays the kid Barry, he he seemed very innocent. I I felt for that kid. I felt the same. Yeah. But but Ezra Miller's Barry, no, I just either version of it. I didn't I didn't buy it, and I wondered if Andy Muschietti was going to sort of tone down. But instead, it looks like they turned up yeah. the the approach. And this movie, by having two Barrys instead of one, meant that they re like that's they really put it on him like yeah. they put it on him to carry this movie so i guess what did you think of just the general story choice like we talked about multiverse but then the idea of like what they were doing in this version of a multiverse story the spaghetti analogy if you will that michael keaton was laying out for us as a contrast to no way home's version or Endgame's version mm. or even what we're seeing now in, in the mcu I, I think it didn't really add anything to the storyline in terms of how the multiverse works. Uh, the spaghetti analogy. I mean, I liked hearing Keaton explain all these things and talk to them. And, yeah. you know, he's he was always a good Bruce Wayne for me and a smart Bruce Wayne. He was the smartest of all. Of all the guys that played Bruce Wayne, I just I just didn't really connect with it too much, Brian. I was really distracted by some of the things that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, vi visual effects certainly is, was a problem for me, Brian. Visual okay. effects was certainly a problem for me. Uh, but the way they told the story of the multiverse, it wasn't anything that made it more interesting than what I've seen already. Uh, I, I was a little bit amused because the, when Keaton laid out the spaghetti and it's like, you get this big hot mess in the back of my mind. I'm like, <laughs> he's right. Cause look at the MCU, <laughs> right? He, he, he ain't wrong. <laughs> His analogy is really spot on right now. Wow. Wow. And I was like, did the, you know, obviously this movie was written a long time ago before we knew the MCU would turn into the gobbledygook it's become. <laughs> but, um, when I saw that scene, I was like, Oh, this is pretty. This is pretty interesting. Wow. Um, what do you think of Supergirl? Uh, to me, this was like the surprise that. of the film. I, I was like, I was disappointed she didn't get more to do because I was, and I went in being afraid of this take. But I, I liked Sasha Kaye. I liked Sasha Kaye, but uh, I don't know what else could she have done for this story other than give us more of her. Uh, ultimately, the way it ended, I, I think, and we'll talk a little bit more about this as well, was fitting uh, for what James Gunn is trying to do. Yeah, I guess I guess all I'm saying, I, I thought she, the version of the Kara character that she was playing, I actually found interesting to watch. It made me feel like, even though obviously with the resolution of this film, it seems 99% certain she won't be the woman of tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I actually thought this version of the character could have worked in that type of story as a more sort of militaristic, you know, aggressive, yeah. you know, like yeah. I, I was like, I was seeing that. And I was like, I, mm. I went in thinking, yeah, no way they should consider her for that. And then I walked out being like, yeah, you know, the only yeah, thing I was sad worked, about, yeah. the only thing I was sad about, and I do have to bring this up here, is the trailer really ruined all her best shots. That's the only thing. Like, I feel like this was a movie where, and I understand, they, they Green lantern this. Like, and, and if you guys don't know what I mean, go back and watch the final trailer for Green Lantern when the buzz is already negative. Watch that trailer if you've seen the movie. You will see every good shot, well, such as there are. Every major shot from every major fight scene and set piece is in the trailer. Yeah. But it's because the studio knew the ship was sinking and so they pulled out all the stops to get people to go see it. I think that's what happened here. They, they were yeah. so worried. They were like, hey, we got to show you everything. But mm -hmm. I did find myself thinking, especially with Supergirl, but even with Batman as well, how much more would you have enjoyed some of these set pieces if you hadn't seen these clips in the oh. trailer beforehand? I think they would have had a lot more impact because they were some of them were really well thought out, like yeah. choreographed in terms of what they were having those two characters do. Yeah. And and I it, I just found it being like, well, I already know what's going to happen because I've seen it in 20 commercials already. <laughs> Yeah, she looked. She she definitely looked uh, the part, and 
certainly that different the you know uh what's that what's the name of that 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 storyline that they're going um move, woman of tomorrow? tomorrow yeah yeah she would have definitely fit the bill but brian let's talk about one cameo <laughs> go for it did he did he not look perfect him and her because we saw her in one film and she was in secret of my success with michael j fox and that's the supergirl character what was her name ellen slater yes and christopher reeve man that look that that to me is superman right there and henry cavill was nowhere to be found other than some video game looking like thing that they were doing i no I way to be wonder found this just shows you that it was done with them so i actually have some i have some other information about about that angle of it but let's take the okay the, now if we're delving into the reeve slater scene there's two parts to this to me for me so one is it, it was colored a little funny like it i don't know what was going on like it felt like there was a little green something going on like he almost looked like i don't know what it was like the way at least on my screen when he's drifting down he comes into focus the color of his face looked off to me it didn't look like i don't know who's that again christopher reeve christopher oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Something looked a little color off in that shot that Brian, I couldn't all of them out. all of them look crazy but I gotta say, man, it still was kind of magic just to see Christopher Weave float into focus and be like, "Man, it's been a long time since a big screen." I, I, I and it's funny. I just showed I just showed my daughter uh, the Superman the movie and Man of Steel, and I hadn't seen Man Superman the movie start to finish in a while. And so, you know, just to remember that performance, right? Yeah, he's yeah. he's third build. Like mm-hmm. I I forgot that in the credits. It's Brando's first, Hackman is second. They don't even they don't even put Christopher Reeve's name in the credits till after the title of the movie, which shows yeah. you how you know unknown he was. Mm-hmm. But it's an amazing performance, an amazing debut performance, and just for even five seconds, I know they couldn't have him speak, and that's fine. But just to see him, yeah, yeah, it was just a reminder was, of greatness. Just, and yeah. I know some people feel a certain kind of way about having Supergirl next to him because that movie was atrocious. But like, yes. I didn't, it didn't bother me. I was like, no, it's just that... from an era. It's just from an era that yes, was exactly. You know, when that was what we had, and and, and so I, I was okay with Helen Slater being being drawn in there. So, um, can we talk? While well, we're into cameos, though, we got, we've got to stay in cameos. Okay. Gal Gadot. Okay. We got. To talk ah, about I almost forgot about it. We Go got to ahead. talk about it. Okay. So, <laughs> we, so it's six months. Shazam: Fury of the Gods, Fast X, and now this movie. She's like, I'm here. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, don't, don't cancel my movie. Don't cancel my movie, please. Oh, oh man. Well, how was the reaction for in, in your theater? Um, lukewarm. Yeah. Lukewarm. And I'll, I'll get to the, I want to talk more about other cameos later. Cause there's some inside baseball here, but it's, ve- and then she, I'd send you this article, which just came out. Cause she has a trailer out for a movie on Netflix. which actually looks pretty good to me uh, called heart of stones where she's like, I want to do projects where I have control. <laughs> Which okay. is sort of like seems like her admitting that Wonder Woman is gone, right? Because that's not a project where she would have control anymore. Yeah. Um, but I feel like these cameos are definitely aimed at like her really, really not wanting to be fired from from these roles. So I don't know. It was fine. I mean, like you know, it's like this is what I mean though about not outrunning the Snyderverse. Like this is what you have. So mm-hmm. once you commit to the bit. Yeah, it kind of makes sense that like if you got Affleck there, that Gal Gadot would be there, and so they they at least kind of had that. And then you know they even show like you mentioned Henry Cavill, they show his back, him fighting something, and they show they show the scene where the must remember the whole mustache gate was the worst, where he's fighting them. That's the mm-hmm. one CGI scene. Now I heard, I heard there's an alternate ending where he was in the movie that they shot it. Yes, I heard that too. Yes, with the whole Snyder vs. Justice League, there's an mm-hmm. they they actually created the ending, but because of all the changes that DC leadership went through, they went through three different endings based upon who was running DC at the time. But there is a version out there that has Henry Cavill in costume as Superman alongside the rest of the league, ending the Flash, not the way wow. it did it. Interesting. So Henry Cavill, cut again, man. <laughs> 
I hope for his sake that he does find a great role for him down the road, and this becomes like a, just a fun story that he can tell his kids or his grandkids. But like, yeah. you know, for right now, it's uh, it's yeah, a tough man. Beat. Let's see, let's see, let's see. He, 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 when you've hung around the rock so much, it's hard to let go of whatever thing, whatever sauce you think you had. Well, the Rockets won. The Rockets won over here because he gets to say that the opening weekend box office for Black Adam was a lot bigger than the Flash. <laughs> That's Word, a true right? statement. That's not, wow, a, that's not a positive, that is, but that's a true statement. That is not crazy. But in it's crazy in a sense based off all the hype this movie was getting. Yes. Which was always in question because of what they were probably going to lose. They wanted to get as much as possible and not have it be a catastrophe financially. You know what I'm saying? So they did what they had to do, but ultimately, you know, the fans win on this one in terms of uh, not being fooled by all the hoopla. So number one is crowded marketplace too, right? Because Spider-Verse is doing great. You know, Transformers, second weekend. Like there's a lot out there that you can watch right now. So this movie had to be what was this? What, what, what was the second weekend on Transformers, you know? I mean, it was down like two thirds from the opening weekend, but it's still you had it still made over twenty million dollars U.S. I mean, if you just do okay, the math, yeah, like that's, all right, that's, that's over twenty. Sure. Spider Verse is like twenty seven, then you have Elemental at like thirty, and then you have this movie at fifty five. Like, if you add that up, that's a big opening weekend. But when you have four or five movies splitting the take, like it's just it's just too competitive. I, I my conspiracy theory on this whole hype machine. I think I think money changed hands. To support this film i do not believe i just don't the amount of people who were who were leaking stuff saying that this was dark knight and back to the future combined and like i see yeah, i see and like saying. tom cruise stephen king payola if we, if we found out <laughs> if we found out that david lazoff was writing checks to select people in the social media verse and among the a-listers just saying hey put in a good word for this movie i'll cut you a check would we be shocked? Because no, because there's no way this many people are, were like, this movie's an all timer. And we get what we get is okay, fine. Like, it's just. We got to go wanna... back. We got to go back to see who said this and be like, uh huh, these are the people who got paid off. Because I no way. Like that. I just don't believe that, like, all these people legitimately saw a rough cut of this movie and were like, man, move over. 1989 <laughs> Batman and 1978 Superman. That's what you were seeing people say. Yeah. Like, and it was quite ridiculous. It was quite ridiculous. But I was entertained nonetheless. Yeah, no, I, I don't want people right. to say that. I would recommend people see this movie. Like, of the DC Universe movies, this is not bottom shelf. Like, this is a lot better than Black Adam. I don't think it's much worse Certainly. than Aquaman. I don't think it's much worse or better than Aquaman. I think it's like, if you if you like Aquaman, I think you'd like this movie. Like, I, I think yeah, it's in that yeah. same class, but... It's just not top 10 movie of all time, which is what people yeah, were telling us. It's crazy. Uh, visuals? Yeah, you go for it. I think you had a bigger problem than I did, but maybe it's just because I had been taken out of the rest of the movie by then. But Brian, we've seen movies. Yo, Double Impact had a better <laughs> representation of showing. Did you hear what he just told us? These were our parents. Look at them. You know what I'm saying? When they showed those two side by side, come on, man. There's a lot it of that. Looked, exactly. Every time I looked at it, I'm like, really, yo? This is how they're going to make this look? They couldn't. It looked bad, yo. It looked bad. It didn't look like a $250 million movie. There's no excuse for that, too. I mean, you look at like movies like The Social Network, even like 15 years ago, had the two, you know, Winklevoss, Winklevoss twins that look spotless on a much lower budget, right? So there's no excuse for a movie like this having that kind of error. This dude, Andy Muschietti, supposedly said, Brian, uh, don't quote me on this, but from what I heard, the visual decision to make it look like that was to, was purposely done. Um, so that we look through the perspective of the Flash. So, did you hear that? 
No, he absolutely said that. He absolutely okay. said, but now he was referring to the speed force shots. He's not referring okay. to the shots you're talking about, which would be okay. outside of it. He's referring to the people were put off by like the baby scene. Oh, that was horrendous. Like the, and the ending scene where like yes. when you enter that dynamic, what it looks like relative to like how Zack Snyder showed it or how we saw, like I said, in the X-Men movies. But yeah, he's claiming that's a choice, but. Come on, man. $250 million? How long you been working on this? It don't look at, it doesn't look like it at all, Brian. But that's the, that was a big trouble. That was a big, one of the big problems for me. But that's keeping with the theme. The problem with the Flash movie is the Flash. Because to mm. me, I, like I guess I don't know, maybe you disagree. I think the Batman action looks fine. Like I think, oh, yeah. when, I think when Supergirl's fighting Zod, it looks fine to me. It's when the Flash is doing the action or doing the talking, and that's the problem. You can't you can't have a movie built around this character where the central character is the weak link. But that's what we have. It, yeah. I will say this is also on display for me, and I don't realize it's not fair to say now, but this is my greatest fear with Superman Legacy is that we're going to get there, and like whether it's visual, whether it's acting, we're going to be like this movie was held back by whoever does get the nod to play Clark Kent and Superman. That this is it right here because you there's the trappings of a pretty good, interesting movie here that is bogged down by everything to do with the lead character. Yeah, yeah. What were your thoughts on that that cameo by uh, Nicolas Cage? Okay, so this actually touches on something that I would wanted to talk about because this movie went really in on some inside baseball Hollywood history, and I don't know how many people watching this movie would get it. So the yeah, yeah, first yeah, yeah. instance of this is the Eric Stoltz Back to the Future thing. Yes, that happened. Yes, folks. If you don't know that, Eric Stoltz got the job as Marty McFly before Michael J. Fox. He filmed for five weeks, yep. and and the budget for the movie ballooned because Spielberg and Zemeckis realized he was not working as the lead. So they went back and they got Fox, who was actually on a break from Family Ties at the time. And the rest is history. How many people watching that scene really got the joke, which is that Eric Stoltz was in Back to the Future, and that that actually happened? Okay. So they then brought that back. Not many new, not, not many new people. Right. That's people. my point. That's like an old, and you can find it. Go Google Eric Stoltz back to the future. You will find scenes he shot on YouTube, which yeah, brings us yeah, to yeah. the Nicolas Cage cameo. There is a documentary out there called the death of Superman lives. Everything you see in that scene was supposed to happen in real life. The impact of that scene is Nicolas Cage at one point had the role as Clark Kent Superman. He's a lifelong comic fan. He was supposed to have long hair. He was supposed to have a super duper shiny suit, just like the one you saw. And producer John Peters mandated that in the third act of that film, he was to fight a giant spider. Being a spider. That is Which turned all out to be Hollywood Wild history. Wild West. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but again, like, if you don't. So to me, when I watched it, I was like, I get all of this and I'm amused. But if yes. you don't know that, it just kind of looks like bad CGI with Nicolas Cage's face. It looks like Scorpion King. I don't, I don't, I don't get the VFX decisions for this, man. It's just, it kind of scares me for Brave and the Bold. But let's continue. Was there anything else, Brian, that you were right about the Clooney? Because there was a rumor about the Clooney uh, cameo. Yep. I didn't stick around for the post credit scene. Did you, what was the post credit scene? Do you know? I saw it. Um, there was actually almost a fight in my theater before we got there, which was oh, <laughs> we'll get into that. But two people were two people were into each other. Apparently did not enjoy the movie as much as I did. Um, but no, the, the post credit scene went nowhere. It is a scene with um, Barry Allen and Jason, Mom or Ezra Miller and Jason Momoa ah. coming out of a bar. They are both drunk. Uh, Jason Momoa passes out in a puddle of water and basically says, like, well, I'm at home in the water. And Barry leaves him on the street. And I guess my take with the Clooney and this, that scene, I think you're supposed to be left with this ambiguous feeling of what's left exactly of the Snyderverse, right? I think that's the message they're sending is like, yeah, like we're sort of wrapping this up and maybe it's open-ended and who knows where we're going with this, right? So 
it's the idea that yeah he fixed a lot of things but like so and he said he says in the scene jason momoa is arthur curry he's like you're in all of my universes i always see you it's always you mm-hmm. you know so maybe that's supposed to be a clue to us that like maybe jason momoa is going to be both lobo and aquaman for a while i don't know but it just it didn't again it's one of those scenes that's like it's like the shawarma scene it doesn't really have like any sort of storytelling impact it's just sort of meant to be there i think for a little bit of fan service and with jason momoa having oh yeah that's right aquaman 2 a movie which i don't know might have been a good time to put a trailer in front of this movie but we ain't seen no footage so here's the biggest thing for me leaving this movie the box office massively disappointing i think the studio has the green light to get rid of Ezra Miller, to leave all this behind. They clearly want Muschietti as a creator. They gave him Brave and the Bold. He's directing that officially. And, and I first the uh, first look uh, deal. Yeah. So he's he's a he's a he's a favorite son right now in in the new in the new DCU and at WB. But with this movie set to maybe break even at best, I think they have all the ammunition they need to very graciously extract themselves. Uh, from the Ezra Miller situation going forward. And I would say, if he does get to play this character again, I'm out on the entire universe because oh, yeah. that oh, would yeah. be a colossal oh, failure oh, of yeah. judgment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm done. But if I don't think it would happen. Happened, yeah, yeah. If, but, but if it did, I, I would be done. I don't want to know anything about that. The DC, it's over for me. I think superhero fatigue is has set in, Brian, and. And any shenanigans going forward will not be tolerated. And people will, will be like, no matter what kind of movie comes out that's dope, it's not going to do well. It's going to be... Uh, yeah. I think the bar's high. Um, Marvels, no. Craven, no. <sighs> Aquaman 2, no. This is bad. Look at that. Listen to that lineup, yo. Listen to that lineup. That's the rest of your year. That's the rest of your year in film, in superhero genre. That's this was our point all along. Was like this Guardians and this movie were kind of where it was hinging. And once Quantum Mania kind of fell apart, like I think though, like I said at the beginning, I think a big part of this, um, you know, it's not for, not in all cases, but I think this whole multiverse thing's got to go away. These studios got to get off that man. It's it, like I know for Spider Verse it's working, but Spider Verse is its own animal because it's animated and like it's accessible to kids in a way that the other the others are not. It's better done, quite honestly. That movie's well done, and the animation is creative and it's mm-hmm. fun. These multiversal, it's not working in any and anywhere, like anywhere. They're better I'm, off cutting this thing off at the knees and going in a different direction. Time travel right now is just I don't want to hear about it. No stakes. You know, yeah. That's the thing is like it's like they tell you there's all these massive stakes, but then there's no stakes. This is what we're afraid of at the beginning. It's like when no one can really die because there's like infinite possibilities. Then like, are there any real? Is there any real drama? Impl- yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tracy said it best. Yo, once I do time travel, I'm out. <laughs> uh, at least they made it interesting in the beginning, and in terms of. Uh, the Loki series really, really got, got us interested in seeing what they had in store. So that's the thing, right? Why, when you look at why, like, No Way Home worked against the... These are against the odds. Like, when Endgame works <sighs> against the odds, when, when No Way Home works against the odds, it, it's, oh, it's always because the time travel itself and the characters you bring in have real purpose to your story, right? No Way Home really surprised us, I think, because of the people they brought back, like, meant a lot to the story. Garfield, you know, Defoe, Molina, like, these characters really brought something new to the film. When you start doing it to just do the alum- Illuminati sequence or to do the Nicolas Cage sequence, you're just checking boxes for fan service and you're yeah, wasting time. Man. You're wasting time. <sighs> You know my stance on all of this. So, I'm pretty sure you and I could agree this. That's it. It's over. Yeah. It's it's over. That's it. It's over. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I think the movie, the movie at least doesn't force James Gunn to carry anything forward if he doesn't want to. It's open ended, but he doesn't have to, and I think he mm-hmm. won't because the the money isn't there. So I think it's mm-hmm. it's move on to Blue Beetle if you think that's some if you think that's like its own little something. And I you hope know, that movie hope- doesn't suffer, Brian. It's going to be tough for it to have, a, but the budget's lower. That's the one thing. Like the bar's lower, the budget's lower. But again, the reviews are going to have to be outstanding for that to really kind of find an audience, especially late in the summer. But I think for the go forward, it's just clean break. 
you know, Superman legacy, focus on that as sort of an, an origin for the, the types of stories you want to tell and just leave this behind. It'll be two years by the time you get to Superman legacy. People will have long forgotten this by then. Yeah. Like this movie, this movie is good enough to be forgotten. If you understand what I'm saying, like if, if it's epically bad, Certainly. then people remember it. Right. And it, if it's epically good, people remember it, but this is just good enough that it's like you're entertained for two hours and then you forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would agree with that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I definitely, cause I definitely forgot about this movie only for the, the purposes. I only know and have some mental space uh, to dedicate to it just for the purposes of, of talking about this film. But I, when this is, when this is over, when the hoop, you know, after this is gone and the next thing comes, uh, which is Blue Beetle, because James Gunn has mentioned this movie to be part of his DCU. So a lot of people are going to be uh, looking at that film to see because Brian, if that movie fails, let's say this movie doesn't make money. Let's say the movie is trash. Is it be? Does it continue to be part of this DCU if people are outright saying, "Yo, we don't want to"? This was whack. Yeah, look, I mean, I think James Gunn was in a tough spot with the promotion of Flash, right? Because it's not a movie that he oversaw, and so like he's out there saying how good it was, but then I'm like. Of course he is. I mean, what is he going to say? He's the head of DCU now. Is he going to say that this movie... And, like, David Zaslav clearly thought this movie needed to go to the theater in the first place. Like, what's James Gunn going to say? That that's average? Like, he can't say that. But he has to say it's good. Blue Beetle is a choice, right? Blue Beetle is one that he said, I want to take this along with me. So that's the one where you're kind of more judging James Gunn's taste than than this movie where I'm kind of like, yeah, he's part of the hype machine, but he kind of had to be part of the hype machine. What I will say is, so Zaslav told us Black Adam was great. In, a sh- in an earnings call, told us the Flash was great in an earnings call. How bad was Batgirl? <laughs> he told you these two movies were great. He canceled that one. So either Batgirl was actually a classic or that thing was so unwatchably poor that like we should all be thankful that we're never gonna, we never get to see that. All these... You know, all the things that you just mentioned regarding Zaslav saying this is this is great, this is great, this tells clearly tells you what he's here to do with this franchise. And if it doesn't work out, one hundred billion dollars. Uh any last words, Brian, before we wrap this up? No, I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna give this one. Um, I'm actually gonna give this one three stars. It's kind of like right in the middle for me. Slightly above. Be- it's slightly better than I. I think it's entertaining enough that I'll give it the three. But like, it's definitely like you don't have to have to go see it. Two and a half for me, man. I can't yeah, give the, the 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 special effects. It's just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Him saying that the visual effects was from the perspective. Of, of of Barry Allen is like telling me this meal is the fr- is from the perspective of a man who does not have any taste buds. <laughs> it's like, oh, now I get it. It's like nothing, amazing. But it has arrived. It is over, and. Now we look forward to the new stuff. Although the new stuff coming this year isn't that great other than the one I'm looking forward to seeing is Blue Beetle. I hope that is good. Now we look forward to Comic-Con. Uh, outside of that. Casting, oh, casting, yeah, yeah. Certainly, you know, certainly, certainly. certainly. That's, I look forward to that more than what else is on the calendar. And we're going to get that. We're definitely, we're definitely getting Superman get casting. That. More than just Clark Kent. You're getting yes. major characters going to be in it. Yep. What do you think we get it for the MCU? Are we going to get a casting for Fantastic Four, you think? Doesn't sound like it. Not unless, they, not unless they're going to open up the bag a little bit wider for the stars they want. Which may or may not be a good thing. But yeah, we'll talk about that in our MCU show. We have it to. Continues, fa- continues to struggle. Yeah. yeah. But hey, none of uh, yeah, let- going to happen anytime soon. So they, maybe they don't have to do it <laughs> Comic Con. Who knows? Word. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of the flash. Um, was it everything you expected it to be? Did it live up to the hype that uh, these execs and those people who had seen the movie 
uh, and compared it to these other classics, do you think what Brian mentioned, there's a little hint of here, say this, and I'll take care of you. It may well be, Brian, because you cannot, with a straight face, compare this movie to Back to the Future or No Way Home. Or The Dark, none of that, none of that, none of that. If you were to say that to me, I'd be like, yo, we can't, I'm sorry, we can't talk no more. It was cool, but it's over. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Jim Report. The show goes